Hello, everyone. Welcome to the University of Maine Cooperative Extensions Preserving the Maine Harvest webinar. I'm Kathy Savoy, and I'll be joined today by two of my colleagues, Lisa Fishman and Kate McCarty. Uh, Kate will be in our demo kitchen, and Lisa Fishman will be managing our Q&A box. Collectively, we have over 60 years of delivering home food preservation education to the people of Maine. We're excited to be able to offer these workshops now as webinars and glad that you have joined us for, for today's topic, which is making quick pack cucumber pickles. Our webinars are following the USDA recommendations for preserving foods at home, and they also um, correspond with the main growing cycle. So today's topic um, on quick pack cucumber pickles We'll talk about these types of pickles, which are fresh vegetables flavored in a mixture of water, vinegar, salt, and spices known as the brine. These types of pickles are not fermented, but some are brined several hours or overnight, then drained and covered with vinegar and seasonings. These products are typically canned in a boiling water bath to allow you to have a long shelf life with them at home. We're gonna break down all the details that you need to know about pickling ingredients to give you the best tasting, high quality pickles you can make. And then we'll demonstrate how to can them in a boiling water bath. If you've joined us before, you know that our webinars are set up um, in a way so that you can see us, but we cannot see you. We invite you to ask your questions using our Q&A box, which is located at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And we have times dedicated during the webinar to answer your questions. If we do not get to answer your questions during the webinar, you will receive a follow-up email um, answering the question. So thanks everyone for joining us and let's get started with today's popular topic, making pickles. Kate? Thanks, Kathy. So let's start with the ingredients that make up the pickling liquid or the brine. So first up, let's talk about salt. So canning and pickling salt is recommended for use in pickling as it is pure granulated salt. So this means that it doesn't have any additives like an anti-caking agent or iodine, which can both cause your brine to turn cloudy or your pickles to darken. And then other salts like sea salt and kosher salt don't have those additives either, but because of their different crystal size, they can measure differently, which would mean that your pickles might turn out under salted. So we recommend that you use canning and pickling salt. Next up is the vinegar. So you wanna make sure that your vinegar is a 5% acidity to ensure the safety of your pickles. This means that you can't use your homemade vinegars since the acidity in them varies and may not create a safe final product. White vinegar is usually the default vinegar for your recipes as it's neutral in flavor, but you can use any kind of vinegar you want as long as it's 5% acidity. So you might consider trying apple cider vinegar in your sour mustard pickles or your bread and butter pickles. You may see as you're shopping the vinegar section, a new product, called all-in-one traditional vinegar pickling base. Let me make sure you can see that really well there, great. So this is a marketed as an all-in-one product where you just need to add the vegetables um, to create pickles. But we don't recommend using this product for canning due to the unknown properties of the mixture. So we recommend that you make up your own brine according to a research-based recipe. Okay. So the last ingredient in your brine is going to be water. So hard water can give your pickles off colors and flavors. So if you do have hard water at your home, you'll want to soften it. And the way you do that is to boil it for 15 minutes and then let it stand for 24 hours. If any mineral sediment develops at the bottom of the pot, pour the water off and leave the minerals behind. So now let's discuss cucumber selection. Typical pickle recipe calls for three to five inch cucumbers, so that tends to be on the smaller side. Larger cucumbers can be bitter or hollow and result in poor quality pickles. So you'll wanna 
keep your eye on your pickles as if they're growing in your garden and make sure you harvest them on the smaller side. And then you'll want to pick a cucumber that is a pickling variety compared to the salad cucumber. So pickling cucumbers have thicker skins, less water in the flesh, and smaller seeds, which will give you a crunchier pickle than if you try and use a variety that's grown for fresh eating. So non-pickling varieties are commonly labeled as European, English, and slicing cucumbers. For best results, you wanna make sure your cukes are nice and fresh. They're best refrigerated after harvest and used within 24 hours. And that's not always possible to know if you're purchasing them from a farmer. So just make plans to pickle your cucumbers shortly after you buy them. And a big concern around homemade cucumber pickles is crispness. So we're gonna spend a while talking about ways to give you those crunchy home canned pickles. You're never gonna get that cloth and snap with home canned pickles. So it's important to set your expectations, but there are several things that you can do to improve the firmness of your pickles. One tip is to prepare your cucumbers properly by cutting the blossom ends off. Be sure to remove a 16th inch slice from the blossom end of fresh cucumbers. Blossoms contain an enzyme which causes excessive softening of pickles. And so the blossom end is the one that's opposite the stem end. You wanna slice a sliver from this end to ensure that these enzymes don't cause your pick pickle to soften. And if the blossom end is missing, or excuse me, the stem is missing, just look for the lighter shade of the pickle skin, that's the blossom end. So you can see in the slide there on these pickling cucumber variety, I've circled the blossom end and then I've also got an arrow pointing out the stem end. And then you may find that some pickle recipes call for steps like slicing your cucumbers, salting them, covering them with ice cubes and refrigerating for several hours. And all those steps are aimed at drawing water out of the sliced cucumbers, which will give you a crunchier final product. So read your recipe well ahead of time so that you don't begin your project only to learn that your cucumbers need 24 hours to rest. And be sure to follow any of these steps to give yourself the best chance at crunchy cucumber pickles. All right, so we've got a little quiz for you here. We've got three different varieties of pickles. And we want to know which one you think is the pickling variety. Number one, number two, or number three. All right, so it looks like you all did a great job in sussing out the pickling variety is indeed the first basket there. So number one um, are the pickling variety. The number two is European and the number three is the slicing. So you can see the difference between the three and the, um, the way the skins look, um, that kind of signature bumpy flesh. Their pickling cucumbers are typically shorter um, and fatter as well compared to the other varieties. So the variety really is important. So make sure you ID the right one in, either in your garden or at the farm stand. All right, so now Kathy's gonna give us more tips on achieving crisp pickles. Great, thanks Kate. So once you know you've got the right type of cucumber for pickling, um, we wanna talk a little bit about some of the recommendations for firming agents for pickling. Um, at the grocery store, you may find some products called Extra Crunch or Pickle Crisp. These are both calcium chloride products they're available from either Mrs. Wages or Ball, which are two companies you may be familiar with if you are a um, seasoned food preserver. Um, the calcium chloride actually helps to firm the pectin in the cucumbers, helping to maintain some of that crunch, which is desirable uh, for a pickle. This type of product is added directly to the jars before you add your spices or vegetables into the jar. We encourage you to follow the directions that are provided on the products. Um, in our experience, what we have used is the Ball um, Pickle Crisp product, and it's just a, a scant eighth of a teaspoon per pint jar that's added. 
We did an experiment last summer in our demo kitchen and did indeed find that the jars that had the pickle crisp in them did maintain more of a crunch than the jars that we processed without the pickle crisp. Another product that you may see referred to in some recipes or may read about in the literature is called pickling lime. And it is another crisping treatment and it is no longer recommended. Uh, in the past, it was recommended to soak your pickles in and then the directions uh, provided said you had to have several thorough rinsings to safely remove the product from the pickles before canning. Uh, so we recommend that you use other approaches to keep your pickles crispy. You may also see alum referred to. It too is another outdated recommendation for pickling. And furthermore, it only uh, worked with fermented products. Um, so as long as you follow the advice that we're providing today, you should not have an issue with those soggy pickles. Um, another tip is we encourage people to refrigerate their canned pickles prior to opening and then remember to serve them cold. This helps to preserve that, uh, add some crispness and uh, pre preserve the texture that we all desire in a pickle. Next up, let's talk about flavoring with spices. Spices do not affect the pH of the recipe so you are safe to leave them out or substitute to your liking. We generally prefer whole spices to ground as they make for a better product, but we also understand that whole spices can be expensive and also hard to, to find. Um, dried ground spices are typically recommended to avoid and why that is is because um, those ground spices can give a muddy or cloudy um, appearance once they're in the brine. And the, this can be confused with signs of spoilage. But again, it is not a safety issue to substitute ground spices. So if that's what you can find, it is okay to go ahead and use those. Dill is a common spice that's a herb that's used in your dill pickles. If you're growing your own dill this summer, Know that fresh dill seed heads can be used in place of dill weed or dill seed. Just remember to let the dill plants produce a flowering seed head and then trim the seed head to put that in your dill pickles. Use one head per jar in place of the dried dill seed that's in the recipe. Another creative approach is to make your own pickling spice mix. That way you can control the flavors that you want. Just a few of the possibilities include cinnamon sticks, bay leaves, which I do love, um, chili peppers, which my husband does love because they provide that element of heat, peppercorns in any variety. You, you know, you see a lot of red, white, black, um, provide a pretty um, display in your brine mix as do yellow mustard seed, fennel seeds, allspice, cloves, coriander, turmeric, celery seeds, dried ginger, horseradish, and let's not forget garlic. So we have provided a lot of information on the ingredients that are included in your jar of pickles. Let's take a minute and check in with Lisa Fishman to see if we have any questions in our Q&A box. And if you have a question, go ahead and add it. So, so far we have a couple of questions that have popped up. Are Kirby cucumbers the same as pickling cucumbers or are they also on the no-go list? I'll take that one. So the Kirby cucumber is actually the variety name of a type of pickling cucumber. So yes, Kirby cucumbers are on the go list. <laughs> Great. Another question, once canned, should you still leave your pickles in the refrigerator? And I can, I'll field that one. Um, once they are canned, they are, and you check that you have a vacuum seal, they are safe to store on the shelf. So the recommended environment for storing your home canned goods is a cool, and that would be defined as 50 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, dark, and dry place. 
and you really want to let your cucumbers set your pickles set for a while after you have canned them to allow them to develop flavor so that's about two weeks to a month great uh, generally speaking is sugar a required ingredient for pickles my daughter cannot have added sugars such as cane, beet, coconut, maple syrup, honey, etc. And Splenda is not an appropriate sugar substitute for her. So sugar is another ingredient in pickling that is added for flavor as well. So any kind of sweetener you can leave out if your recipe calls for it. Um, and the only thing that you can't change is the proportion of vinegar and water and food. So those are the three items that you can't mess with the ratio of, but everything else, salt, sugar, spices, is just there for flavor. And so you could alter. Kathy's also gonna cover more information about low salt and low or no sugar um, pickling. Great, and that's all we have in the question and answer box for right now. Great, thanks so much. Um, so once you have settled on a tested recipe for pickles, um, a research-based tested recipe for pickles, which would come from the USDA Complete Guide to Home Canning, the National Center for Home Food Preservation, ball canning um, recipes, or your local cooperative extension. Um, and again, there are many varieties of pickles to choose from. There are sweet bread and butter pickles, and I'll be providing some guidance on how to um, use a lower sugar option for that one. I'm from the National Center for Home Food Preservation in a little while. Um, there's also kosher dill pickles. There are sour mustard pickles. And remember that there is a whole world of vegetables that can be um, pickled. To, um, your slide shows you a few of those. We have the ever popular dilly bean or pickled green bean on the far right of this slide. And in the center, you can see that they are pickled beets. And then you have um, the sour mustard pickle on the far left. So again, lots of variety of vegetables that you can make pickles from. Boiling water bath canning is the recommended method to ensure that vacuum seal that is required to make your product shelf stable. The atmospheric steam canner is another safe alternative for processing. And we will be covering this method, the atmospheric steam canner, in depth during our webinar on August 11th. So mark your calendar for that event. Um, and now we're going to jump back into the demo kitchen and watch Kate preserve a jar of um, pickles. Thanks, Kathy. So yes, I have, I'm going to be making the kosher dill recipe from um, So Easy to Preserve, the National Center of Home Food Preservation from the University of Georgia's extension. We'll make sure that you have this resource in your um, follow-up email so that you can make it too. It's kosher dill. It's a very simple recipe. The brine is equal parts white vinegar, 5% acidity, water, and pickling and canning salt. So equal parts vinegar and water, and then a, a proportionate amount of the canning and pickling salt. You bring that to a brine and then you pack your jars full of your spices, your vegetables, you pour the brine over the top, you add the lids and you can it. So ahead of time I've prepared the brine. Again this equal parts vinegar and water with a little bit of salt and I boiled it and then for our purposes I'm just going to put it into a measuring cup so that it's easy to pour when it comes time to fill our jars. And then I prepared our cucumbers. So I've got the um, traditional pickling cube here. Kathy got these from a local organic farm even, I, I believe. Um, and I've got a few prepped up ahead of time, but the one I'm gonna prepare for you. So again, I'm gonna cut off the blossom end. So this is where those enzymes might be lurking that will cause your pickles to soften. So we really wanna make sure they are removed from the equation. Um, and then I'm going to quarter the pickles. So of course, you'll have a much larger cucumber hull than what I'm showing you here today. So you'll repeat this process for a long while. So I've got a nice stack of sliced cucumbers. And then the other behind the scenes thing I did was to prepare my boiling water bath canner. About halfway full of water. 
and full of clean um, washed pint jars. And then I brought the whole thing to a simmer. So my jars are nice and warm. And then once you've heated up your jars, you wanna put them on a cooling rack versus directly on the cold counter. We'll get that bad boy in view here on camera so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I've got my cooling rack to protect my hot jars from the relatively cold counter. Nice and toasty. And then um, you'll begin the process of filling your jars. So for this recipe, to the bottom of the jar, you add one clove of garlic, one table, no, excuse me, teaspoon of dried dill seed, and then half a teaspoon of mustard seed. And I'm gonna add that eighth of a teaspoon of pickle crisps. You can see it's like these tiny little white granules. Frankly, it looks like something you would sprinkle on the sidewalk after a nice storm. Um, directly to the bottom of the jar, they'll dissolve in the brine when they come in contact with that hot brine. And then you'll pack your cukes in. So most of these I trimmed ahead of time, so I know they'll fit. But you wanna make sure that all of your vegetables are half an inch from the top of the jar. So that's the part we call headspace. And that's vital to ensuring that you get a seal on your jar. So if you don't leave enough space, your pickling liquid is gonna overflow and potentially could interfere with a seal forming between the top of the lid and the bottom of the jar. And if you leave too much space, um, it, the li liquid won't be able to expand and push the air out of the jar, which is what causes the vacuum to form. So you can see this one right here is on top of that little piece of garlic I put in there. So trim that so they're at least half an inch below the rim of the jar. And you can check that using your headspace measurer. So this is a tool used to measure headspace with little fractions of an inch on the end of it. Pickles are, again, half an inch. So some of my pickles are still sticking up here. So we'll trim those as needed. Carefully. Or, all right, so I'm happy with, happy with the headspace on my vegetables as well as the pack. So I've packed everybody in there tightly. Um, you know, you want to fit as many in as you can, but not so tight that when you're pushing the cucumbers in that you'll start to damage them because that also is something that would contribute to a lack of crispiness in your final product if they're really beat up. So then once your jars are packed, you can come along with your hot brine and cover the vegetables. Um, if you um, don't wanna use a measuring cup like I did, you can use a canning funnel to get the liquid into the jar. So once we've covered the vegetables, double check the headspace and it's right on, which is great. If you need to make small adjustments, you can use a teaspoon to take some, put some in or take some out. And then because we poured liquid over a solid, we need to free the bubbles. So there might be trapped air underneath these pieces of, of vegetables in the jar. And indeed, you can see it kind of bubble up. So we take the other end of the headspace measuring tool and kind of run it lightly around the outside of the jar and then um, measure the headspace again. So this caused the headspace to drop a little bit. So that must mean that it filled in some air bubbles. If you were to skip that step, potentially that trapped air could cause your jar to break. So adjust the headspace after you freed your bubbles and your jar is almost ready to go into the canner. You wanna wipe the rim of the jar off here. So there's some pickle brine on the rim. So I'm gonna clean that off nicely so that I get a good seal with the bottom of my lid here. So this orange sealing compound is what helps to create that vacuum seal. So you wanna make sure it has good context tacked against the glass jar. And then apply the screw band or ring until it's fingertip tight. So just using the strength of my fingers, it's on there firmly, but not so tight that the air that's still inside the headspace of the jar can't escape out during the canning process. And after that, it is ready to go in the canner. So you would repeat this process for as many jars as you needed to get your 
cucumber harvest under control. Um, cover the canner once it's full of your jars of pickles. Turn the heat on the stove up. Bring to a boil. Once your water has reached a full rolling boil, you'll time for 10 minutes according to my recipe for these pint jars. And then once that 10 minutes is up, you'll turn the heat on the stove off. Um, let the canner rest for five more minutes. This is an important step to ensure that any spoilage organisms inside your jar have been killed off. And then remove your pickles to cool. Again, once again, back to the um, cooling rack. Let your jars cool undisturbed for 12 to 24 hours and then come back and check the seals. So this is a jar of pickles we canned last year. You can see the difference in the color after they've been cooked for 10 minutes and in there resting for five minutes. They've got a little bit of a cooked look to them. Um, and then this jar is sealed because the lid doesn't have any play in it compared to an unsealed jar. So that button in the middle is pulled down by the vacuum, which ensures us that this is safe to leave out at room temperature uh, for best quality for up to a year. So try and eat your pickles before next year's cucumber harvest. Once you open the jars, you wanna refrigerate them. Well, with pickles, you wanna refrigerate them before you open them for best quality. Um, keep them in the refrigerator while you're enjoying them and try and use them up within two weeks. I think that's everything. If it's not, you'll ask me a question about it and we'll answer it then. <laughs> All right, thanks Kate. And I also really liked how she used the wide mouth pint jars to be able to get a good pack of cucumbers in those in that jar, which is a great technique when you are packing things that are chunky like your cucumbers um, and other pickled vegetables. Um, I'd like to take a minute and talk about an alternative to the boiling water bath canning method. And this is called the low temperature pasteurization treatment. It is a USDA approved method and it involves following all of the instructions that Kate just gave you as far as packing your jar. Um, but then instead of using a boiling water bath method for a 10 minute processing, you um, put your um, jars of pickles in um, a boiling water bath for a longer period of time at a lower temperature. So um, you heat your water to 180 to 185 degrees and you keep the jars in there for processing for 30 minutes. So again, this is a uh, USDA approved method. Um, it is an attempt to create a crisper pickle because it has a lower temp, um, which is used to pasteurize the contents of the jar. So what I have found um, in the times that I have used this as an alternative to the boiling water bath processing is that it is important to use a thermometer to monitor my water temperature. Again, it's keeping the water between 180 and 185 degrees for 30 minutes. Um, if your water should happen to drop below 180 degrees during that 30 minutes of processing, it can mean that you have not properly processed the pickles and therefore they, they would not be safe for long-term storage. Um, following today's webinar, you will be receiving links to the National Center for Home Food Preservation um, recipes that are pickles for a special diet. So these include recipes for low sodium pickles and also low sugar recipe pickles. So if you've ever made the bread and butter pickles, which are really a great, flavorful, fun pickle, you know that they also have a lot of sugar in them. Um, so again, look for this information after our webinar. We're gonna take another poll, see how you're doing um, as far as understanding the information that we're sharing with you today. So our next poll asks the question, what information should you look for on the label when purchasing vinegar for pickling? Choose between organic, unpasteurized, 5% acidity, raw, or free range. We'll give you a few minutes to finish adding your answer.
And it looks like we've got most people. And the results are that yes, you are paying close attention to us and realize the importance of looking for that 5% acidity on the label of your vinegar that you purchase. So let's go ahead and check back in with Lisa to see if we have any questions. We do, we have quite a few questions. So the first one is, is there anything behind adding a fresh grape leaf to the pickles to maintain crispness? So this uh, method I've seen in a lot of um, some older sorts of resources for um, making pickles at home. And I have never seen any research that backs up that it is an effective approach for helping to make a pickle more crisp. So that would be my answer to the question. Do either of you know if Olympia or Citation pickling cucumber varieties are pickling cucumber varieties? So I saw this question in the Q&A box and I will admit I am not the horticulture person at our office. We do have a horticulture person here though. Um, and the Olympia variety of cucumber looks like it is reaches a mature um, size of eight to nine inches. So I, it doesn't specify if it is a pickler or not, but I would say based on the size that it may not um, work out as well as a pickle. Um, but it is an important thing to note that when you are buying your um, cucumbers or your cucumber seeds, to look to see if they are described as a pickling variety. Typically they will be sold as a, a, um, a pickling variety or a salad or slicing or European variety. And we know that those are the ones we want to avoid. And I'm not sure about the citation, sorry. Should the lids be boiled too, or can you just boil the jars before the pickles are added? A newer recommendation uh, out of the ball canning is that the lids are no longer required to be boiled ahead of using um, in preserving. And that change came about a few years ago. And I would encourage you to read the directions that come with your lids and the newer lids um, do not include the step for boiling them ahead of time. Do you have to can the pickles or can you put them in the brine and eat them a day or two later if you refrigerate them? Sure, so? you can do that. We have um, any recipe that is designed for canning could also be used as a refrigerator pickle. Um, if you were to follow the gut or the volume for pickles that are recommended, you might find that you have too many in your refrigerator to eat within the recommended guidelines. Um, but you can scale these recipes down or up as needed. So you could have it, double it, triple it, depending on um, your cucumber harvest. So if you did want to make a refrigerator pickle from a recipe that's designed for canning, you could um, scale it down so it would make maybe a quart jar and be a really great way for you to just preserve a few cucumbers on, that you might have on hand. Okay. The liquid that you used, was that hot water? The liquid that I used was the pickling brine. So in this case, the recipe for kosher dills, the whole thing is three cups of vinegar, three cups water, and six tablespoons of pickling and canning salt. So it, it looked like water. It's clear when you're done with it, but it is half vinegar, half water, and then it has salt dissolved in it. Thank you. How much does pickle crisp cost? It, run, it runs about five to seven dollars depending on the retailer and it will last you a very long time because you you only use an eighth of a teaspoon per jar so this 5.5 ounces is going to last you a couple of seasons is it necessary for the cucumbers to be fully submerged beneath the brine Yes, so ideally they would be fully submerged beneath the brine for a couple of reasons. So the brine is what gives them the flavor and so they need to be fully submerged in the brine to um, fully impart that pickling flavor as they sit. 
And then also in canning in general, any of your um, fruits or vegetables that sit above the liquid will discolor over time. So ideally um, your headspace, both for the liquid and the vegetables will be half an inch, which will mean that the pickles in there will be um, fully covered. Okay. If a recipe calls for 10 minutes processing for a pickle for a half pint jar, how long would you process a pint jar? So the recipe I was demoing today was 10 minutes for a pint jar. And then um, typically the recommendations for quart jars is five minutes more, but that really depends on the recipe. So you wanna ensure that you're following a, a research-based recipe that has um, a processing time for quarts rather than just trying to add five more minutes to the pint processing time. So find one that is designed for quarts and follow that, um, but typically it's 10 minutes for pints and 15 minutes for quarts. Okay. You have time for a couple of more questions, I think. Can you use the same recipe and methods for making chip style pickles? I would say that you can, you just have a few caveats. So um, if it's a cucumber pickle, one time, so I can speak from personal experience because I had, I was um, a new preserver and I wanted to make chips, dill chips, using the dill, kosher dill recipe, thinking I like the chip style, I'll be able to get more chips into a jar than I would otherwise with spears or whole pickles. So I just cut the pickles into chips or the cucumbers into chips, filled the jars, canned them, was so excited to try them, but they were horribly mushy and gross. I compared them to applesauce. You could hold one in your hand and just smush your finger through it. it. They were all inedible. And that's because the recipe I followed was for either spears or whole or halves. And so it didn't include that really important step of slicing the cucumbers, salting them, icing them, refrigerating them for at least 24 hours or several hours to 24 hours, depending on the recipe. All of those things are designed at getting you crunchy um, chips. So if you go down to chips or if you're making a relish, um, you do want to follow a recipe that includes those crisping instructions or else you'll regret it. <laughs> okay, and I think we're going to close the Q&A for now. And if we have time at the end, we'll try to answer a couple more. Great. Thanks, everybody. Good questions. Uh, so let's continue on by talking about ways that you may find your local produce for pickling. Um, and Kate did mention that I found those beautiful cucumbers at one of our local um, organic farms in the town that I live in. And they are one of many farms that are listed on this Maine Farm Product Directory, which was created from our UMaine Agriculture colleagues as a great interactive directory so that you can shop directly at local farms. So be sure to visit the farm's website or call first so you can learn about how their policies um, may have changed during COVID-19. I know, for example, the um, farm stand that I go to, you are required to wear a mask and they allow only one person in at a time. So there's plenty of signage at the sites to let you know what they are expecting of you as a responsible consumer during this time of COVID-19. Um, I also want to share with you some information on our recommended resources. You will get all of these resources included in the follow-up email. So it includes our Let's Preserve Pickle fact sheet, um, the How Do I Pickle information from the National Center for Home Food Preservation Education, and the USDA information on low temperature pasteurization, um, as well as those recipes that I've mentioned um, on pickles for special diets, which includes information again on the low sodium and low sugar recipes when pickle making. And so let's pass it back to Kate to talk about a few other things we're offering. So along with these new webinars, we've also started our Preserving Coach program. So we have a group of trained volunteers that we call the Master Food Preserver Volunteers. They are trained in all aspects of home food preservation, and then they go out and volunteer in their communities uh, teaching food preservation education. 
our community volunteer opportunities have been severely limited this season. Um, so we thought this preserving code should be a great way for our volunteers to provide preserving information to first time or beginner um, preservers. So if that's you and you're interested in being paired with your very own preserving coach, someone who can coach you through the um, main growing season and provide you with safe and up-to-date recipes for preserving, you can email me and I'll connect you with one of our volunteers. So we have several interested volunteers and we've had a handful of people enroll so far. So we still have plenty of room in the program. So if you are a Maine resident interested in being paired with a preserving coach, you can shoot me an email. And we'll be back next Tuesday at two. We're gonna keep talking about pickles, this time uh, making pickles by fermenting cucumbers. And then other topics for July include always to preserve green beans and freezing Maine seafood, which will include a special guest. We'll share an email with upcoming registrations, resources and recipes from today's topic and information on how to be paired with a preserving coach. We'll also share with you an evaluation and a certificate of completion. So if you complete that evaluation, um, you can provide us with your US mailing address for a free Headspace tool, which is so important for getting the Headspace right on your pickles. And Lisa's right, we do have time for more questions. Before I ask for a new question, um, our horticulturalist has messaged me and said that um, she's not familiar with the citation variety of cucumber, but maybe um, you mean citadel. So if citadel is the cucumber variety you're talking about, that is a pickling cuke. All right, so Lisa, what other questions do we have? Super. So we also have a question about, do you tighten the lid more after the jar comes out of the canner? So after the jars come out of the canner, it's not recommended to tighten the rings. Um, so it's recommended to just leave them undisturbed. So don't tighten them or loosen them or blow a fan on your jars or put a towel over them to insulate them. You just wanna leave them in an undrafty area, um, kind of spaced out, you know, so they have a little bit of breathing room between them to really allow them to cool naturally and slowly and let those vacuum, strong vacuum seals develop. Yeah, so no, no tightening of the rings. Okay. How long was your boiling water bath for? So for this kosher dill um, pickling recipe that was in pints, it's five minutes of boiling water bath. Oh, I'm sorry, it's 10 minutes, excuse me. 10 minutes of boiling water. <laughs> How long can you leave your jars being heated up in the boiling water before you prep them and add your ingredients to them? Will they break if they stay in the pot too long? So I typically, that's the first thing I do when I, I start a canning project is to wash the jars, put them in the canner, cover them with water, and bring the whole thing to a simmer. Um, and they, you can leave them in there for as long as it takes you to prepare your recipe. I suppose if you um, excessively boiled them when you put your jars in them, so once you've completed the recipe, filled the jars and are actually ready to start canning, you wanna make sure you have at least an inch of water over the tops. So if you do have an extended um, boiling time before you put your jars in there, you might not have enough liquid to fully cover the jars. So it's really important to check and make sure you have at least an inch of water over the tops of the jars. Um, and there is no harm in them breaking while they're in the canner, empty, right side up, simmering and warming while you're preparing your recipe. These jars are made for repeated um, heating and cooling. And so you should have a nice long lifespan out of them um, with multiple uses. I think we have time for one more. Do you recommend putting the jars in the hot water as you screw the lid on each one jar? Or should you prepare all of the jars at once and put them all in the water bath canner at once? So ideally, um, you would be able to prepare your recipe all at once and then put it in all together. So with pickles, you wouldn't want to prepare one jar and put it in the canner because the, the simmering water will, can, will heat your pickles. Um, and so that first jar compared to the last jar will have been in there much longer, which will affect the quality. So ideally with pickling, you would be able to take all of your jars out, fill them with the spices, vegetables, add the liquid, 
adjust the headspace, apply the lids, and put them all back in as a batch. So that's why it's really important to work quickly, um, not frantically. You don't want to burn yourself or break anything or spill anything, but just work quickly and efficiently so that your product doesn't cool while you're filling your jars. But for best quality, it's best if they all go in at the same time. Okay. We do have a few questions that have not been answered, but as promised, uh, a follow-up email will go out to each of you who have asked a question that did not get answered live. And that is it for the question and answer session for today. All right, well, thank you all so much. Thanks for the great questions, and we'll see you back here next week for Kathy's spectacular fermented cucumber pickles. They're looking good. <laughs> see you next week.